Welcome to vocabulary lesson number one. This will be the first of three videos that you will need to view for the very first vocabulary additional assessment. Each video will have 20 words, so that gives you 60 words total to learn. So let's get started. So for our very first word, we have apathy, which is a noun. It is a, considered a thing, and the thing is a lack of emotion or interest. So in the sentence we see, after a series of depressing news stories, Lisa felt apathetic about the future possibilities for her generation. So you can see here that the noun apathy can also be used as an adjective, apathetic. So that gives you two ways to use the word. Regardless of how you use the word, it has pretty negative connotations of laziness and carelessness um, and also essentially just giving up. Um, in this case, that's what happens to Lisa, is that she feels dejected due to the depressing news story. So do know that apathy has a negative connotation to it. For our next word, we have ambiguous, which means having more than one meaning or vague. So ambiguous is an adjective. And in a sentence, we see it was ambiguous as to whether the penguin's encouragement was earnest or sarcastic. So first thing to note that for adjectives like ambiguous, they can most often be turned into adverbs by adding ly. So you can write ambiguous or ambiguously. Now ambiguous has connotations of um, kind of being unclear or unknown. Now when it comes to information, we want our information to be clear and direct. Therefore, ambiguous is oftentimes seen as a negative thing, um, though that isn't always the case. But in most cases, you'll use this word negatively. For our next word, we have fervent, which means passionate. So it is again an adjective. And so in the sentence, the immense amount of data on the internet made Edward so excited that she broke out into a fervent frenzy of dancing. We can see the adjective fervent, or you can use it as an adverb, fervently. And do know that when it comes to the word fervent, passionate, Fervent is to a more intense degree than passionate. So if you're going to write intensely passionate, that's when you would use fervent. Also, the word fervent tends to have connotations of chaos and being out of control and wild. Uh, so it's very intense passion that kind of leads to erratic behavior. So for our next word, we have vagrant, a wandering homeless person, a tramp. So this is a noun, and based upon the second part of this definition for certain, it has negative connotations and actually is considered an insult towards the homeless population. So please do not use this word in your daily conversation. However, we're learning it because in past literature, it is a word that was commonly used. So if we look at this sentence, the vagrant set off on his journey towards New York City in hopes that opportunity would await him there. Here the word is used with more positive connotations of hopefulness and kind of wandering. However, generally speaking in previous literature, vagrant or vagrants, which is the noun and vagrant C, um, which is the adjective, is um, they have connotations of crime, um, poverty, uh, kind of being dirty, um, and kind of a blight on a city. So we can see how that's a very negative uh, word uh, to use for the homeless population. All right, so for our next word, we have undermine, to weaken, to wear the foundation of. So undermine, which uh, is a noun, we see in the sentence, the magic eight ball undermined Gina's confidence that she would get a perfect score on the SAT. So when you have an adjective, of course the tenses can change. So you have undermine, undermined, undermining. And in this case, when you undermine, you inflict some kind of harm upon another. Uh, person or thing. So therefore, it's somewhat negative. However, if you're undermining, say, an evil king, that's a good thing. So it depends on how you use the word. All right, so for our next word, we have oblivious, unaware, and unconscious. So oblivious is an adjective, and in the sentence we see the calming fresh spring air made Rupert oblivious to the loud city traffic. Again, since it's an adjective, you can turn it into an adverb, obliviously. In this case, oblivious has uh, connotations of peacefulness and focus because Rupert is being able to shut out something distracting. How obl however, oblivious can also have negative connotations of being ignorant um, or kind of fleeting, and therefore you can use it in multiple ways. It just depends on the context of the sentence. 
So for our next word, we have indifferent, not caring one way or the other, lacking a preference, neutral. So here, indifferent sounds like a pretty neutral word because it even has the word neutral in the definition. However, if you use indifferent, do know that it is kind of considered a pretty um, negative uh, adjective. All right, so for indifferent, let's take a look at this sentence. Don Draper didn't follow any social norms because he believed that the world was indifferent to people and therefore it didn't matter. So here, indifferent or indifferently has connotations of being standoffish, careless, um, and, and almost a slight connotations of being cruel. Therefore, we can see here how the word would have negative connotations. So for our next word, which is obscure, again, another adjective, we have unclear, clouded, partially hidden, hard to understand. So in a sentence, we have no one at, that can, at the cantina could understand the obscure music of the Ertolan musician Max Rebo. However, despite not knowing the meaning of the lyrics, they sang and danced along anyway. So here, obscure has connotations, again, of being unclear, but also connotations of being mysterious. Therefore, obscure is not always a negative thing. Now, if you say the thesis in your essay was obscure, that's a negative thing because you want your thesis to be clear. However, obscure music can sometimes be exciting and innovative. So it depends on how you're using the word obscure, which again is an adjective. So for our next word, we have objective, which is kind of the opposite of subjective. And being objective has connotation or has connections rather with being non-biased, while subjective has connotation uh, connections with being biased. Therefore, objective without bias um, in our U.S. culture has very positive connotations. When we hear our news or presentations, we want them to be objective, which means led by logic um, rather than biases. So here we have the shoe bill stork that should say listened objectively and then provided fair and practical advice. So with this objectively, um, this is a good example of when an adjective has been changed into an adverb. The L-Y has been added. All right, so for our next word, we have revere to worship. This word clearly has religious connotations to it. And in the sentence, we see SpongeBob revered pizza as the most supreme food as I guided him to safety through so many stormy oceans. So here, SpongeBob is practicing the food religion. Um, and we can see that revered uh, is an adjective, uh, rather a verb, and therefore it can change tensing, revere, revered, revering. All right, so next we have discriminate, to differentiate, to make a clear distinction, to see the difference. So discriminate is a verb, and in this sentence we see the green fish was not allowed to enter the orange fish area as the hand discriminated against all things that looked like broccoli. All right, so um, especially in U.S. culture and also in many, many cultures, discriminate has very negative connotations because it's being seen as unfair towards certain groups. So uh discrimination. All right, poor green fish. All right, so next word we have is embellish, to add details to exaggerate. So here we have in his story about the White Walkers, Jon Snow always embellished the severity of the situation. For instance, it was never just snowing, it was always a horrific blizzard. So embellish is a verb, so it can be embellish, embellished, embellishing, and usually it means to add unnecessary elements. So you can add unnecessary elements to a story uh, that makes it a little over the top, or you can embellish your hair for prom, which means to add kind of like glittery things to it. So it's the idea, it's not always a bad thing, it's just the idea that it makes it a little more showy. Um, so that's how to think of embellish. It's not always a bad thing. Sometimes it can be really good. It just depends on how you use it in a sentence. So for our next word, we have denounce, to speak out against, to condemn. And we see this verb, denounce, 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 sing, or other tenses. Dumbledore denounced Harry's trickery and putting his name into the goblet of fire. How could he break such a sacred rule? So here we see that denounce is to show kind of displeasure over some type of action. And again, this word um, can be positive or negative depending upon what's being denounced. All right, next word we have innovate, to be creative, to introduce something new. So innovate has very positive connotations, especially in today's culture where we connect innovation with kind of this new cool technology that we love using. However, it can also have negative connotations such as with the Imperial Walker was a deadly innovation that once utilized in the war severely tested the strength of the rebellions and led to the deaths of many brave fighters. Here, first off, we can see that innovate which is a verb, has been changed to a noun here, innovation, which is a thing. And since it is a deadly innovation, we can see how in certain instances the word can be used in a negative way. 
All right, so next word, stagnant, not moving. So oftentimes stagnant is used with stagnant water. So here we see water that is still, um, and that is water you don't wanna drink from because it's filled with bacteria um, and other things that can make you quite ill. So if you're ever stuck in the wilderness, please drink from moving river water, uh, not stagnant water. However, in this sentence, we can see how stagnant can be used in a different way. The loading bar became stagnant at 99% before crashing in an error. Blue Cat was furious and destroyed his computer with a smile upon his face. It's kind of weird, Blue Cat, but I understand. So here we see stagnant used in a different way. This adjective um, is very versatile and can be used for computers and very still water and in other situations. All right, our next word um, is candid, which means honest or frank. So here we see this in a sentence. Walter knew it's time to be candid. He finally broke it to Philip that his hair conditioner was not just was just not working anymore. Poor Philip. So we can see that candid is an adjective. So you could have candid, candidly. But what's important to know is that with candid, being honest and being frank, candid ultimately means to provide information that someone doesn't really want to know. So being candid is not just being honest. It's being honest um, in a kind of a oh, you got to know this kind of way. So for instance, Philip doesn't want to know that his hair conditioner isn't working anymore, but Walter knows that it's for the best that he knows that. So keep that in mind when using candid. It's not a direct um, synonym for honest. It has other connotations to it. All right, so our next word is impartial, which is uh, pretty synonymous with objective. So you have impartial, objective, unbiased, and then you'd have subjective, partial, and biased. Uh, so Keep in mind that impartial is very similar to objective. And we see in this sentence, after Lisa, the president of her school's environmental club, criticized her father for being wasteful and polluting, he set out to find an impartial observer who could give him a more fair opinion. So here we see impartial is an adjective. Um, so you can say impartial, impartially. All right, next word is discern, to distinguish one thing from another. So this is a verb, so you can say discern, discerned, discerning, and other tenses. And in this sentence, we see Frederico could discern no difference between his two options, which made it even more difficult to decide. So discern means to be able to tell the difference between two items. Granted, I feel like he should be able to see the difference between a diamond and a squiggle, but maybe not. Um, and therefore, do know that discern doesn't really have a positive or a negative connotation. It can be used um, in either direction. All right, so next word is ostentatious, showing off. So while our previous word embellish can be used in a positive or negative way, ostentatious is going to almost always be used in a negative way because it's adding to something in a way that's intended to show off um, arrogantly. Um, so in this way, sentence, we see the ostentatious dancing of Spider-Man created feelings of awe and some feelings of jealousy and other and even feelings of annoyance in a few. So here, ostentatious has connotations of showing off and kind of feeling as though you're better than others. And so Spider-Man showing his cool moves, but he's being a little over the top and showy with it. And therefore, it's ostentatious dancing. All right. Our next word is contentious, which means quarrelsome. So contentious is an adjective, and we see it in the sentence, Ross and Rachel had a contentious breakup. It is a descriptor. They both believe the other was to blame for the end of their relationship. So you um, usually use contentious with a contentious conversation, a contentious debate, um, a contentious interview. Um, the descriptor suggests that whatever kind of um, conversing is occurring is argumentative, is tense, has a lot of aggression in it. And so that's how you would use that adjective. All right, so that is the last of our words. Do know that um, right below this word, you have access to the slideshow. And at the end of the slideshow, there's a practice that you can use that are essentially kind of like uh, flashcards. So please check that out so that you can quiz yourself and prepare to take this assessment and pass it. All right, good luck and thank you for watching this video.